This slide cast we're going to look at time for completion. Now, this is covered by section 10 of NZS 3910. Now both the principal and the contractor want to finish the work quickly. The principal wants to have his contract works available to him so he can use them and make money out of it. Uh, the contractor wants to finish his obligations and then uh, make his money and then move on to the next one. If a project runs too long, the contractor is going to start losing money. So there's a bit of a time period here. So the contractor is entitled to the possession of site. The contract period starts, the clock starts ticking. And it stops at the due date for completion. So that is at the beginning of the contract, that is what the contract period is. That is the theory. In actuality, the actual contract period is when the contractor starts the work and it finishes when the practical completion certificate is, is issued. Now hopefully these coincide with each other. If they do then that's fine. But this is what the contract obligation is. The contract period is the obligation that the contractor must meet, not the actual construction period. So if the contractor takes, in actuality takes longer than what was required, then he is technically in breach of the contract. He has not filled his obligations. One of the contractor's obligations is to build the project works in a specific period of time as set out the contract period which runs from when they are entitled to possession of the site through to the due date for completion. So practical completion is um, a confirmation that the works have been completed except for minor issues or defects. Um, the certificate of practical completion is a formal document that says yes the contract has fulfilled its obligations to build this building and his obligations are no longer have been fulfilled and he no longer had those obligations to the principal. That is issued by the engineer and the decision of whether to issue the practical certificate practical completion certificate is the engineers alone. The principal can't go to the engineer and say I don't think that the practical completion certificate should be issued um, because um, it's not his decision to make. The decision is made by the engineer and the engineer alone. Um, when the practical completion certificate has been issued, then the contractor is deemed to have fulfilled his obligations. The principal has control of the site, so if it's a road or something like that, the principal can start driving cars over the top of it. If it's a building, he can start occupying it. Up until then, the um, contractor has possession of the site and the principal can't do that. So the possession of the site is no longer the contractors, it is now the principals. The bonds and insurances are released, which means the contractor doesn't have to pay his premiums on the bonds and insurances. The works are no longer insured. So um, at that time of practical completion, the um, principal really wants to have his insurances and stuff already, so that when the contractor's insurances um, finish, the principal brings his insurances online so that the building is insured. Um, usually 50% of the retentions are released. We'll look at retentions later on. Retentions are a certain amount of money that the principal holds back to make sure that the uh, contractor completes the work. So 50% of those retentions are given to the contractor. The other 50% is held until the end of the defects liability period, which we'll talk about later. And the defects liability period begins. There is usually a period, 3 months, 6 months, 12 months, where the contractor is required to fix any um, workmanship mistakes or material mistakes. So if you're building a road and um, the seal starts unravelling within the defects liability period, that would be regarded as a workmanship error and the contractor would be required to come back and fix that. Even though he's deemed to have fulfilled his obligations, um, there's still that one obligation left that he has to repair any um, uh, workmanship problems. It's just like if you buy a TV, there's a uh, period of time where you ha it's under guarantee. So if the TV blows up, you're able to take it back and get your money back. In this case, you can't take a road back and get your money back. Um, you can ask the contractor to repair it. So the practical st st uh, completion certificate is issued like this. This is what one looks like. Um, oftentimes, there'll be a few minor items that need to be fixed, uh, minor emissions they don't stop the practical completion certificate being issued they are just required to be done by a certain period of time you can see that they've been given a month to do that that it is dated and that's when the clock stops uh, and you also say when the defects liability period finishes 
liquidated damages uh, what happens when the contractor runs late remember I mentioned that the uh, one of the obligations of the contractor is to do the works in a set period of time that contract period there if he does not do the works in that contract period time if he runs over that due date for completion then he is technically in breach of the contract he has not fulfilled his obligations uh, and the client the, the principal may well have incurred cost if the project runs over by say a month then he has to maintain this, uh, keep the services of the engineer for another month and he's still paying the engineer, he has to pay him for that extra month it might be that he um, was going to tenant the building um, and so uh, that extra month is uh, rents that he's not going to get it might be that uh, he has loaned money um, to build the works and so he's going to be paying the interest for another month more than he would have had to have otherwise so he will have incurred costs now those costs are estimated at the beginning of the contract liquidated damages is part of the contractual agreement the, that part of the contractual agreement is that the contractor agrees to pay the principal a certain amount of money um, for every week over that he runs and that is part of the agreement and so if he does run over, then he has to pay it. In fact, what happens is the money is deducted from money that is owed to him. And the, the, the total amount of the liquidated damages is the um, rate that's been agreed times the time, which is the difference between the due date for completion and when the practical completion certificate was actually uh, issued. So the liquidated damages is um, avoids the need for the principal to sue for damages. Um, those costs that I talked about before, the cost of insurances, keeping the engineer on and stuff like that, they are what is known as damages. They are costs that have been incurred by the principal damages. Uh, liquidated damages are just means that it's readily available damages. You don't have to go to court to sue someone for it. It is money that's there for you to um, take as uh, it is your right to have that money, to take that money. So that's a right that's been um, given to the principal as part of the contract agreement. It's decided by the engineer. The engineer is the person that decides whether liquidated damages are applied or not. Um, and it's included in the tender document, so the part of the contract agreement is that the contractor agrees to pay liquidated damages. It has to be a genuine estimate of damages. So if you're building a road, for example, and you really want to make sure that the um, the contractor finishes on time you can't say that liquidated damages are a million dollars a day or something like that that would encourage the contractor to finish early but it's not a genuine estimate of the damages that you've actually occurred so if the contractor can prove that the um, amount of damages is much higher than um, what could reasonably be expected uh, as actual cost to the contractor to, to the client then uh, he, he can get those damages dropped um, and it's usually a weekly weekly basis, usually about a thousand dollars per week or something like that for a normal size project.